Welcome back to my channel it is me ash and today i thought that i would do a bit of a different video for you guys so one thing that god has done in my life is blessed me in the corporate space i never thought that i would be where i am at um, in regard to my career and i kind of just wanted to tell you guys the backstory of it just so i can do a little more videos on like that are about me personally instead of so many videos just about like scripture and the word specifically so i always feel like god has used my career as like the impossible for me because i have excelled in my career so much i believe that this is how he's showing me that he's real because he has really opened doors for me um and shown me favor in the corporate space that i just never imagined possible so a little bit of backstory um, I am a college dropout. I got pregnant after my first semester at college. Um, I just went to a junior college and then I was going to transfer after, but that did not happen. I ended up getting pregnant and I never went back to college. I did, however, go to a vocational school for a pharmacy technician certification. So I became a pharmacy technician, but quickly decided that that just was not for me. Um, it was like very monotonous doing that type of work and it was not fun um, it was not interesting and having to count every pill in the pharmacy i don't know if it was weekly or monthly but that was like a nightmare so and i thought when i left that that's what i would be doing but it was not so i actually when my daughter was like one or two started waitressing so i've always come from a customer service background so i started waitressing at a like a hibachi restaurant out in california oh speaking of which what's like that's what's up okay anyways Richard's thing out there. Then I became a cashier at the 99 cent store. Um, then I started selling printer ink. <laughs> Literally getting into the most random occupations. But once I actually was a really bad salesperson um, at this printer ink place, so they ended up letting me go. And um, around that time, I decided that I wanted to actually have a shot at um a career so I ended up moving out to Virginia which was divine like I didn't even know God at that time but I knew that God was calling me out here for more opportunities so I'm on the east coast now so I get out here and my first job is to work at a bank as a teller so I go to the bank at like eight o'clock in the morning I work there till four and then once I got off from the bank I would change my clothes there and then go to Fridays to waitress and so I was doing this for quite some time probably about six months I would say and I ended up finally leaving um, when I thought when well I thought this was my plan but this is actually not looking back it's just like the way that God even the stupid things that we do like God always has his has his hand on us I wanted to work at Hooters because I felt like Hooters was a really good way to network because the one that I wanted to work at was located in the middle of like corporate, a lot of corporate buildings and a lot of businessmen went in there to, to have lunch. And I knew that if I could just network, I would be able to get a job in the corporate space. Now, was that God's direct plan for me? Probably not, but this is how God, you know, really like makes our path straight regardless of our choices, right? Um, I get tired of like dealing with male customers. It wasn't like anything crazy happening. It was just like a few instant instances where it was just like, okay, this is too much. And I said to myself, if I'm not out of here in a year, I'm going to quit being able to network out of Hooters within nine months, which was oh, like, thank God. So I ended up going to this other, to my first corporate space, which was the customer service um, what do you call it? Call center for online banking assistance. This job was also a nightmare. <laughs> okay, listen, at this time I was not walking with God, okay? Like I was taking shortcuts all the time. So I used to like hang up on people because I just didn't want to take calls. I used to watch Judge Judy on YouTube. This is when YouTube didn't have like copyright like copyright strikes and stuff. So I would literally just watch you Judge Judy on YouTube the whole day. And um 
I would have to work on the weekends. I remember just like randomly thinking this one time my manager had called me in for our meeting and she was like, are you hanging up on customers? Because your average call time is like really low, like really, really low. And I was like, no, I would never do that. But no, I was definitely hanging up on people because like, I don't feel like dealing with this. But you know what? It's kind of like you reap what you sow because now I get hung up from time to time and I just be like, it's okay. I understand. So <laughs> after I think probably like a year or so, uh, my mom started working at a company and she was able to get me a uh, she was able to get me an interview for a customer service position in this really large fortune 500 company and i was very excited and unfortunately i did not get the first job that i interviewed for because it felt like i wasn't assertive enough i didn't have the personality for it but when i look back on this and i think about it i know that this was god's hand and even though i was very disappointed when it didn't happen um they ended up giving me a job within an internal startup within that company. You kind of have two types of startups. Um, you have one type of startup that is like a grassroots startup, and this is where it's literally, um, the concept is being built from the ground up. The one that I was working in was an internal startup. So this was a new department within a larger company, but there were, the thing that they have in common is that there's no processes, there's no teams in place. It's literally just a handful of people working to build out an, a department from the ground up or working to build a company from the ground up. So this became my area of expertise is working within corporate startups. So I started in 2012 um, and I don't wanna to forget to mention this because I feel like I will, but at the time when I didn't get that first job, that was actually a call center within this large company. And if I would have gotten that job, I wouldn't have been able to ascend the ladder like I did because there were already managers in place. There was already processes and um, teams in place and I wouldn't have been able to grow if I would have gotten the job that I wanted it. This is why God is so good. So I ended up working at this internal startup. It's probably like less than 10 people that are working and um, I'm working in the customer service side and I'm quickly learning that we, we're literally building out everything that we're doing. Like since we haven't done it before, we have to decide what processes to take with certain action, you know, items that are happening. It's a very reactive environment. So it's like things would come up that we didn't even think about happening. So then we have to put solutions in place. It be working in startups is really fun. Um, if you like a challenge because you are literally constantly putting out fires and trying to solve problems very quickly. So I ended up um, really enjoying like that process of being able to like problem solve constantly, never having one day the same. Sometimes the work, it wasn't fun, but I knew that I was in the place that I should be. So I knew if I could just work hard that I would be able to work my way up into the corporate space. And my my idea was to become an account manager, but God had more in store for me. So one of the things about the startup environment is that you can excel really quickly if you work hard and show yourself as someone who is capable. The difference between startups and substantiated companies is that the work that you do is very evident. So if you're not fulfilling your roles and responsibilities, it is glaringly obvious. You can't drop the ball as easily in startup environments as you can um, in like substantiated companies or companies that have been there for a long time and have things in place. So as I was working in customer service, I started, one of the things that has become one of my biggest strengths is to be able to notice gaps in process. So, and that's in regards to like internal teams and stuff like that, the way that we're working. Um, my goal is always to work smarter, not harder. So um, one of my key things is being able to identify gaps and processes that we have. So my first, the first time that I had a chance at promotion was when I identified a gap between our customer service team and our account managers, where I noticed that essentially our account managers didn't have enough time to onboard these accounts to do lifetime or what you call life cycle account management, where you're basically checking in with them regularly, making sure their accounts are up to date, that they're not having any problems, that they're utilizing whatever product that you're selling. They didn't have time to do that. And it was affecting my job. So what I did was I ended up creating roles and responsibilities for myself. I talked to my manager and I was like, hey, I do these tasks to fill in this gap. And so things like flow smoother and they were like, you know, that's a really good idea. Absolutely. So after doing those tasks for probably about six months, I was promoted to an account manager. Once I was doing account management at this job, 
Um, I was working for about probably three years ish in the same position, just kind of doing the same stuff day in and day out. And then I got promoted to doing a different type of account management, which was handling our priority accounts. Now, this was kind of cool because we had other account managers that had more experience than me, but because I had shown myself approved, basically, they decided to use me to be the person that takes on this new role and they trusted me to do so. So I was doing really, really well um, in account management. Then I had a couple of hiccups happening. And during this time, I truly believe like looking back, God was telling me to quit my job because this is when I started probably within like the last year working there. This is when I started building my relationship with God because my daughter had ended up getting really sick. I had to take time off and I was literally working from the hospital sometimes. I believe that God was calling me out of this job, but I was too scared to leave because I had been there for like over five years at this point. And I just, I honestly, the first thought I was like, I don't want to fill out paperwork. Like I don't want to do new paperwork. I don't want to have to figure out where like a new check, you know, the checks are going, like everything just works. Like I don't want to do it. And I don't have the faith to believe like this is what I should do, but I know God was telling me to leave this job. So just like God does, he made me very uncomfortable. There was some things happening where it was like I had all these great relationships and all of a sudden they fell apart. I used to get along with my manager so well and then that fell apart and I had to check him a couple of times and they ended up actually firing me from that job. This is where I truly learned like the hand of God is on my life. I remember when I left the company like I was so upset because I had so much going on in my personal life my daughter was like just getting better they were trying to cut off my health insurance or blaming me for stuff that I didn't do you know when I made complaints I felt like they weren't listening to me but they took the smallest thing the first chance they had to um, get rid of me and they did it and I just remember feeling I ended up like running out of the building um, because they said they were going to escort me out and I said I don't need an escort and I just took off like (laughs) I just took off. I left out like my phone, my charger, whatever, and I just took off. I was like, I don't need an escort. So I just like ran down the the like emergency stairs or whatever. And as soon as I got to the parking lot, like I felt this overwhelming sense of peace. Like I didn't even want to cry anymore. Like I just felt like it's over. I don't have to worry about it. This isn't my problem, which is so weird because like I have never been fired before. I've never really had to do like job hunting or anything like that. Like there was so much unknown but I can't explain the peace that I have, but now I know that that was God. I plan to just talk about my ascent in in the corporate space, but I feel like I have to tie in the stuff, other stuff that God did for me because it all just like leads to what has happened in my life. So um, I, I get home or whatever and I start getting the unemployment checks coming in and I have this peace that I can't explain. Um, I don't have a ton of money in savings at this time, so... There's like no reason that I should be this calm, but there's, I really am not stirred up or scared in my spirit. And again, I'm not walking with God like that, but I know that he's like real and like he's watching over me in this time. So I didn't know what the Holy Spirit was, but I kept getting this unction to pay my car off while I was unemployed. (laughs) It was like, I'm not doing that, but I could not let go of this thought. And this is illogical. And of course, this is how God works. He always wants us to do what doesn't make sense. And I was like, why do I keep feeling like I need to pay my car off? Like, I, I don't understand, but I went ahead eventually. I probably spent a couple of weeks of getting that unction and I paid it off. I ended up getting hired at a new company that was a grassroots startup. So like I said earlier, those are the companies that are like true startups. Like they are, you are building from the ground up with like five people. Um, so I started at this company and immediately I was able to identify, like when I got out of training, I was able to identify the need that they had and I was able to get promoted within two weeks of working, um, at this company. And so I had a lot of favor with like my bosses, my colleagues, like everybody loved me. I loved, loved, loved this job so much. I had such a good time. I started managing a team for the first time and I just had a really good rapport with my team and I just truly enjoyed this job and um, although I didn't spend like a lot of time in my word, I remember often leaving work and just like crying in the car on the way home because I couldn't believe God blessed me so much. And so then on top of that, they did something with like our salaries and my salary increased almost double what I was making before at this previous company. So it was just like, 
I was just in an unbelievable space. Like I couldn't believe God was doing this. So then COVID hit and we ended up getting laid off. And then this is where like my job testimony comes in, which is a video that I've posted. I think it's probably the first video on my channel that I posted. Yeah, four years ago now, I posted this, this uh, testimony about God getting me through like COVID and literally showing me the job that he had for me and building my faith to believe him that you know, this this was for me, telling me just, you know, all these miraculous things. If I remember, I'll, I'll put the video, like, in one of them things that pop up. Oh, I ended up getting that job, and this is where I really see God's hand on my life, but this is also where I ended up backsliding. Um, so during, so after I ended up having that miraculous encounter with God and getting that divine job, I backslid. I started dating someone who was in the world. I was like smoking weed, drinking, going to the club, um, having sex. I wasn't, I wasn't in my Bible, wasn't praying. I, I really would think about God all the time, but I wouldn't spend any time with him. Um, so I was doing so well at this job. Again, just favor among everybody. I had um, a senior vice president that I was reporting to. I ended up becoming a senior manager. I started as an account manager, worked my way up within probably six months to the account management team lead. Within probably a year or less, I worked my way into senior management for the entire Eastern region. So I was handling millions of dollars in revenue per year. Um, and it was just a really good time. Like I had, this was the best team. Like it was even better than my previous job. It was the best team I've ever worked with. I had a senior vice president that I reported to who just helped me so much and was like a really great mentor to me. Um, the My director was my previous co-manager but she had gotten promoted over me but I didn't mind that because I thought that she was brilliant and definitely deserved that position but I was in senior management and I was so excited um, but God had really has really just put his hand on my life and it's that and just a combination of hard work um, when you're working in startups if you can identify gaps in, in in internal processes where you can fill in like that's how you make yourself seen. Um, so I would make like onboarding trainings for our new hires that would last two weeks and they'd be like these really intricate onboardings. Um, I would make the onboarding material for our new customers. So they would have like PDF downloads. Um, I would do all of the resources and stuff that our team needed and Notion for, you know, processes and updates and things like that. Like all of these projects where it just helped our teams run more efficiently and it was like super tangible stuff that I could show how I'm contributing and then with that also creating um, like help centers and working with you know cross collaborating with other teams and just really taking charge and being effective which is something that I just never saw myself as being but it's like when you recognize that God has his hand on your life it's you just operate in a completely different way I forgot to mention when I was working um, at the first corporate job that I had at that internal startup, I had gone down to my mom's desk for something, I don't remember what, but we were just in like a conversation and she was like, you're never going to be successful. And I was like, what? She was like, you're never going to be successful. You're never going to, you're never going to stand out because you don't have a degree. And I just remember looking at her like, why would you say something like that? And she was like, yeah, you're never going to do anything more than customer service. Try again. So it was like, I, you know, is this, that's how I, that's, this is why I know like God uses my um, profession to show his glory is because like everybody counted me out. Like my family used to make fun of the fact that I went to vocational school and they never took anything that I did seriously. They never congratulated me until I got like much older, until they saw my apartment or saw my car and things like that. Not that that matters, but it was like, they never like rooted me on. I had so much coming against me, but God's favor, like when God favors you, it doesn't matter. Through May 2023, I was working at this job as a senior manager um, and it was amazing. And then one day we got laid off. So startup culture is very like unpredictable. So it just comes with the territory. And during this time, like God has always told me what to do with my money. Um, when I got laid off this time, God told me everything that I have in my accounts is enough. Like I won't need any more. And I was like, okay, cool. And so when it came time to like pay my rent and stuff, I still hadn't got my 
um, unemployment money. So I was like, God, you told me like I didn't need to transfer money. So what's going on here? Um, but just in the nick of time, that money ended up coming through and I didn't have to transfer any money because I ended up finding another job. And then I got hired as head of customer experience for another software company. So this was a senior level role. Um, I was very excited about it. And I, when I got this job, I was like, okay, like God's hand is really on my life and I really need to start pressing in and seeing what this is about. And I have a lot to tell you guys about this particular job, but I just kind of wanted to show you how like God's hand is on my life and how God can really do the impossible for you um, in your career if you're willing to work hard. And just like at, at one point, I just always told myself, like, just work as if you're working unto the Lord, like just just get it done. I liken God doing things for me in my career to like God giving Sarah Isaac because it's literally the impossible. Like this old woman having a baby, this college dropout having an amazing career where she's in senior management. Um, it doesn't make sense. And I try to tell my daughter that like, and we live in an area that's very expensive and I've never missed a meal, never missed a rent payment, never even when I was like unemployed, never had to guess where my resources were coming from because God has always provided for us. And so I just kind of wanted to just share that with you guys today so you know a little bit more about me, but also know like anything is possible with God if you just give him the chance to move in your life. If you are by chance in a position where maybe you're looking for a job or something like that, you have to just surrender, like surrender to God, listen to see what he wants. Maybe he's asking you to start a business or to do something different or to get a side business going first or um, focus on some type of ministry before you get back into your full-time career. Maybe he doesn't want you searching for jobs right now. Like you never know what God's plan is, but what I can assure you is God will not open a door that's not for you. And I think that's why a lot of people are met with frustration or finding themselves like unemployed for so long is because they're trying to do things in their own power and they're so distracted by the waves in the sea when they're, you know, in the middle of stuff or AKA like bills and family and debt or whatever the case is that they're not listening for God's word. But God is telling us that if we trust him, if we're saying like, God, I believe that you died for me, then you need to listen to him when it comes to direction in your life. It doesn't make sense that you're saying you believe God, that he's this all powerful being, all knowing, all seeing, but he can't fix your little problem. God can do anything. So I do have a continuation to the story and I can't wait to share it with you guys. Um, but I just wanted to share this little piece, hoping it's encouraging, a little different than what I've been posting before. But anyways, I hope you guys have a good day. And as always, I'll talk to you later. Bye.